So with us today, we have Dr. Patrick So from Multimedia University. Okay, that's Dr. Patrick So uh, giving you a hi. Okay, then we also have with us uh, an expert from Livernes, Encik Hakimi Sahidi. Sorry, Encik Hakim Sahidi. Okay, so uh, Encik Hakim and Dr. Patrick will be sharing with you slightly different what you have heard from the first three episodes we have previously on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And today is our last episode in this series. Um, and also with us is uh, Orang Kuat in, in this whole program, Mr. Ramesh. Mr. Ramesh, give a shout out. So good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to congratulate all of you, young men and women. Okay, uh, you are our the leaders, the future leaders of our country, and it's uh, just fantastic to see all of you so eager to learn today. Okay, uh, let me share something. My screen. Okay, my question to you all today is, do you think business and management are important to STEM? Can you give a shout out? Is it important to STEM? Or is it just uh, uh, not important? What do you all think? Okay, um, yes, many of you say it's important. Some people say it's not so important. Okay. Uh, and today I like to address this topic. Is business and management important to STEM? Okay. Now we all know that technology has a very bright future. Okay. The jobs are in demand, it's lucrative. The, we can have the opportunity to work overseas in America, in France, in Australia. Okay. The, I want to share two things. First thing is that you don't have to be technical minded to join the IT industry. In fact, you don't even have to be smart to join the IT industry. Okay, uh, many of you I know are very smart, but um, don't have to be very smart. Okay, your some of us may not be so smart, but we can also join the IT industry. And the second question I want to ask you is this: Do you like money? Or do you say yes or no? Do you all like money? Okay, shout out. Yes, yes, I see a lot of people say yes, they like money. Okay, uh, that's good. I think I also like money. If you don't like money, you can send to my bank account. Okay. Now, but the other question is this, should we just work for money? What do you all say? Should we just work for money? Yes or no? Some people, yes, I'm not sure. Yes, everyone saying yes, we should work for money. No, some people are saying no. Uh, should we just work for money? Okay. A lot of people seems to be saying yes. Okay, now, we all know that money and happiness may be different. Okay, in fact, money and success does not lead to happiness. And in fact, it is happiness that leads to success and often to money. Why do I say that? If you ask prominent successful people like these people, these MMU alumni people, people who have graduated from MMU, Tan Hui Ling, Ko Chua Cheng, and Nizam Raza, Bobo Boy. Okay. Now, these people didn't follow the money. They follow their passion, they follow their interests. And when they do what they excel in, the money, the success came along. Okay, uh, let me allow me to introduce myself. Okay, as you know, I'm Dr. Patrick Saw. I'm the head of the Department of the IT and Law Unit, Faculty of Management, Multimedia University. Okay, my degree is in economics not STEM, uh, economics, 
Okay, but I did a double major in computer science and accounting in Monash University. And um, because of that itself, uh, I could choose to be an accountant or to be a programmer. And uh, even at the time, programmer, uh, even though I like accounting, but programming got more pay. So I, I became a programmer, uh, worked hard, became a team leader, pro promoted to project manager, application consultant in Singapore. Okay. Then I joined AIA Singapore as the information systems manager. Okay. Now, but throughout all this time, uh, I was working in the IT field doing programming work. Deep down, I wasn't happy. I was, I was getting good pay. AIA Singapore gave me three months guaranteed bonus every year, three months. Okay, maybe this year no more. Okay, but uh, every year was three months good pay, but I wasn't very happy. And um, I will explain why. So I decided to come back to Malaysia and I became a researcher and academician, did my master's of science PhD and since 2001, I've been with MMU. Okay, um, now, so that's my story uh, that happiness and money may we go, we shouldn't, based on my experience, I think shouldn't just work for money. Money is important, but we shouldn't just work for money. We should work for our interests and passions. Okay. Now, so it's important to choose a career that is suitable for you. Okay, yes, we know industrial needs. Industrial needs that are uh, uh, IT is, needs a lot of people pay very well. The second thing we need to know is what is our mindset and what is our interest. Okay, now this mindset is uh, is pretty important. Nobody explained that to me. So I spent 15 years working, not so happy, earning money, but not so happy, okay, of my life in Singapore. And let me explain to you, this is something new, okay? What is your mindset? Okay. Now, there are at least three different mindsets, technical-minded, business-minded, artistic-minded. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum. Very good morning to everyone. First of all, thank you, Natalia, for the uh, interaction. Uh, I also same as you. I'm also introvert in beginning, where during school, actually, I don't talk to uh, girls, for example, but now I'm capable to talk to the world. So let me share my screen now. All right. So... How are you, young generation, the future scientists, future engineers? How are you today? Already got your breakfast? I hope you got. Uh, you are very excited for my session after a very what I call interactive session with uh, Dr. Pratik just now. So for my session, I will talk about the interdisciplinary innovation, science, bridge communication, and you. So today, I would like to share a new career opportunity besides you becoming an engineer, scientist, researcher, or other kind of job that you already know currently. So before I go further, I would like to know what is your current ambition? What you want to become in future? Maybe you can shout in the live chat what you want to become. Yeah, I can see someone want to become engineer, or Prime Minister as well. Wow, so God. All right. Okay. So, yeah. So, most of you already have the ambition what you want to become in future, right? And then, today, I would like to share maybe the opportunity, the career opportunity that maybe you can have as one of the alternatives for you. So, let me introduce myself. Again, my name is Abdul Hakim Bin Sahidi. So you can call me Hakim. I graduated uh, in electronic system engineering from the Malaysian Japanese International Institute of Technology, UTM Kuala Lumpur. And actually I joined Livernes back in September 2016. And then after two years, I become the youngest director when I was 26. Currently I'm 28. And since last year, I also been promoted 
as the managing director for Livernes Malaysia. So if you see below, Q and P, it actually stand for question and passion. So when I was a student, I have a question, why a lot of engineering students that have knowledge of engineering and also have the business mindset, usually they also come up with a business that is not related to their field, which is in this uh, clothes, beverages, everything. So what I would like to develop actually to create more entrepreneurs, especially in our country and also to the world, and also support the implementation of meaningful technology for the society. So I was an engineering and also robotics student. So during my study, I actually represented the university to join robotic competition in Japan, where we uh, managed to get a first place in our league. And then I also represent our university to join robotic competition in Germany as well. So we met, we met a lot of robotics in around the world. And you can see here, this is our small robot, but we were able to beat a lot of giant robots. So it's not about the size, but it's about the knowledge and also the way how you operate the robot. And after I graduated, maybe a lot of people we thought that I will become like Tony Stark, building a robot and then wear the suit to save the world. Or maybe become um, I call an electronics engineer who can create the next maybe uh, chips, microchips and so on. But for me, I am not really into uh, communicating with robots. I am more comfortable talking to the people. But what I want to talk about, I have a knowledge of engineering and robotics. So I want to deliver the knowledge of this robotics, uh, AI, engineering for the community so them can be interested with this area as well. So that's why today I'm not becoming the ordinary engineer. Before I joined Levinas, I also got the offer for a big uh, microchip company that uh, you, see you use for the computer. So I was uh, offered to become the engineer, but I chose to become a science bridge communicator. So today, I would like to share with you what is our company, Livernes, that is a science bridge communication company is about, and why I choose to become a science communicator, and who are we, and what actually we do, and what will be the excitement of becoming a science bridge communicator. And stay tuned with me because at the end, I will share with you a special gift for those who are proactive and maybe listen carefully to our session. So let me go first with the, our company. So here you can see a group of people. So we are the innovative group of professionals from different backgrounds. You can see from immunology, behavior biology, agriculture, psychologists, life sciences, mathematics, and also me from engineering. So we have, we coming from the different background, but what unites us is the same or the common vision that we have, which is to advance in science and technology for global happiness. So what we do, we actually manufacture the useful knowledge and innovative solution for the world. So just to share with you how Livernes started actually, so back in Japan in 2002, there are three main problems that happen in Japan. The first one is their young generation are not interested with science. Say maybe situation in Malaysia, maybe some of you also today not really interested with science, but hopefully after my presentation will be interested in science. The second problem is the government produced a lot of PhD holder during that time. But then unable to prepare enough job opportunity in the market. So for example, what is your feeling when you study hard, anti-master, anti-PhD, but unfortunately you cannot do work? What are you feeling? So the same goes in Japan during that time. And last but not least, there are difficulty actually for commercialization of research from university to the society. So these three problems actually uh, create what is Livernes about. So 15 enthusiastic graduates from undergrads and also postgrad came together and create a mission to make a world a better place with advanced science and technology.